welcome to our podcast, The Power of Dance. We are delighted to bring you a series of conversations about how dance and movement can help in all situations of life, and in particular, right now. Episode one, coping with COVID. No matter who we are or where we're from, we are all in the same boat. From homeschooling, to working from home, to just staying home, apart from the incredible key workers, of course, we've all had to adapt. And it's clear that dance and movement has played a really important part in getting a lot of us through this. No matter how old we are or where we're from, it's really helped. We've seen Dame Judy Dench mastering TikTok. We've seen principal ballet dancers transforming their kitchens into performing spaces. Kitchen discos, online workouts, movement is key to getting us through. We are all in this together and I am delighted to be joined for this series by two incredible and wonderful collaborators who are experts in their field, Dame Darcy Bossel DBE and Dr. Peter Lovett, the director of the Movement in Practice Academy, AKA Dr. Dance. So welcome to you both. Just before we move forward, um, for any listeners out there who might not know your backgrounds or what you're involved with with the dance world, could you just tell us a little bit about what you've done and where you are today. Over to you, Peter. Okay, so my name's Dr. Peter Lovett and I'm a, a psychologist and I specialise in studying the psychology of dance. For me, studying the psychology of dance is a real bonus because I've danced all my life. I've loved to dance and it's the, really the thing that brings me alive. I danced as a small child and then I trained as a professional dancer and then worked in musical theatre shows and I loved travelling around the world as a dancer. When I stopped dancing, I then took degrees in, in psychology and English and neural computation and um, in psychology. And then I set up the Dance Psychology Lab to try to understand dance and dancers from a scientific perspective. What I do now, I now run um, an organisation called the Movement in Practice Academy. And what the Movement in Practice Academy is all about is trying to introduce movement into education, into the workplace, into the healthcare settings um, for all the amazing benefits you get from dancing. I also teach some courses on dance psychology at the Royal Ballet School, which I love too. Thank you, Peter. And Darcy? Yes, so I was uh, a principal ballerina with the Royal Ballet for nearly 20 years and um, I've done a lot of more commercial dance uh, after my career as a ballerina, which I really enjoyed. I loved delving into other styles of dance, performing that in the West End shows and in documentaries. Um, I've done quite a few documentaries about dance, um, about the male dancer, um, the female dancer, um, in in their different fields, um, not just on classical ballet. And um, I've also done a documentary on uh, Dance for Happiness, which was looking behind uh, mental health and how dance facilitates that. I'm now uh, very passionate about a project that I founded called Diverse Dance Mix, which is a dance fitness program for physical education for schools. And I'm um, really determined that we create a norm about dance and that it can be done as part of everyday education. And that um, we use all the different styles from around the world to engage with kids. I really believe that now um, it's really important with social media and the internet and how powerful that is and how engaging that is that we've got to look at other ways to keep kids active and enjoy being active. And dance couldn't be a better tool for that. And so just incorporating that and enjoying all the skills and disciplines and attributes of it. So that's my project and it keeps me nice and busy with um, my other coaching as a dancer. Um, I coach a lot of the principals in the Royal Ballet as a guest coach and uh, in other schools. So in today's conversation we are talking about coping with Covid. So how are you both coping? What's your current situation and setup right now? Peter? Well I'm currently at home in North Norfolk. For me, like everybody else, 
um, lockdown and COVID-19 has had a really dramatic impact on the work I had planned for this period of the year. I was meant to be doing lots of talks around the world and uh, all of those were cancelled because of COVID. And so I suddenly had to reassess things. And it's really hard, isn't it, when all of your work suddenly dries up and the plans you've made for the whole summer are completely, completely altered. And I guess the more terrifying aspect of that is that nobody quite knows, particularly in the arts sector, what's going to happen post lockdown. You know, how long will it take for this to get back to normal? So my new normal at the moment is that I'm at home in North Norfolk and I'm very lucky that I've got my older son living with us. I've got my, our younger son living with us, who's seven, and we've had over 80 days with our uh, adult niece also living with us too. And we've been working from home and of course homeschooling our seven-year-old. So that has been, <laughs> well, that's been challenging and enjoyable in, in equal measure. So we're doing that. We're very lucky where we live that we've had one of the rooms in the house converted into a dance studio. Um, and now this dance studio has been the most used room in the house for the past three months. Everybody uses it all the time. We almost have a booking system now to use the dance studio. Um, I've been using it every day for, for ballet and doing a bar and for doing some tap dancing and do some jazz. So I, I love to use it. But it's wonderful because my, my son Romeo, he does ballet. He has a ballet teacher and he uh, zooms his ballet teacher. He does it in the studio. My wife uses it for fitness classes and, and, uh, uh, and every, the whole family are in there doing different dance classes. So that's been the greatest asset we've got at the moment. We're thankful for that because I think I might have gone slightly crazy without him. Over to you, Darcy. Um, coping with COVID isn't easy at all. I'm, it, it does, um, I don't know, it makes you suddenly valuable, the, how valuable time is. And um, I really find maybe my uh, life as a dancer that uh, I have an advantage on on structuring my day and enjoying the disciplines of structuring a day and trying to get as much out of a day. But of course, um, having two children, trying to do online schooling, um, just trying to keep active actually. I've, you know, it's so easy to sit in front of a computer and enjoy all, all, all of the interaction you can do on, on the internet and everything. But you kind of comes into a groundhog day. So I've been making sure I get out every day, really important with the um, often walk the dogs, uh, try and play badminton every day with my girls. Uh, we really enjoy uh, a hard game of badminton, not that it seems that difficult, but you can do it in a small space, which is perfect. Um, and of course, my diverse dance mix we've been doing online classes for that and so i do one a live one every friday which i've really really enjoyed and i want to keep doing that um and i do a little bit of um pilates so my own sort of pilates i just tick over i don't want to do any extremes i don't uh, worry about um trying to my cardio fitness as a whole i mean nice long walks is good enough but just keeping my body mobile and and supple and strong uh, so a bit of pilates really helps uh keeping oiling the joints which i really notice i think uh being a dancer i'm very very sensitive of how my body feels and how that makes me feel um and uh, i've really understood that by keeping active each day if i miss being active uh, I have a real low and I'm not so proactive and I don't get things done and um, yeah, I sulk, which is not helpful for anybody else. So Peter, you're an academic and you're used to talking to big audiences, um, corporate gigs, etc. But you also understand the science behind the benefits of movement. How can you explain that and make that relatable to the everyday person who's stuck at home at the moment? My research at the university has really shown that the power of dance is extraordinary. And I believe that we are all born to dance. So you don't need any special knowledge or any special qualifications to appreciate the amazing effects that dance gives all of us. So we know that dancing is fantastic for bringing societies of people together. Just by dancing with other people, there's a bonding People report liking each other more. They report trusting each other more. And they show more pro-social behaviour with each other when they dance. We also know that dancing changes the way we feel and our emotions. And of course, it changes us physically. 
One of the amazing things that we found in our research lab about dancing and moving is that it also changes the way that you think. It's extraordinary. When we had people in the laboratory, we'd get them moving in different ways and we'd give them all kinds of problem solving tasks to do. And what we found is that when they moved in a certain way, it changed their thinking and problem solving. So if you're sat at home trying to work out what to do post COVID, or you're trying to work out how to deal with a new situation that you found yourself in, then actually moving your body can help you think of new ideas and new ways of encountering the world. Now, in our research, what we did, we looked at, at a wide range of people. We looked at young people, we looked at middle-aged people, we looked at much older people in relation to their moving and thinking. And we also looked at people with Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease, and that can lead to a whole range of movement-based problems and also thinking and problem-solving problems. And what we found is that when people with Parkinson's move their bodies in different ways, it changed their ability to think and solve problems. So it really is rather amazing. So the scientific research that we do, of course, has to be really rigorous and hardcore science. But the underlying message is really, really simple. When you move, you improve. Moving your body changes so many things about being a human being that it's something I think we should all be doing every single day because you can become the best you by having a groove. Darcy, you've trained with the best, performed with the best, you've experienced on stage, on screen. Um, how can you, how do you think you would be relatable to the everyday person at home? You know, sometimes I think, sometimes it looks unachievable if they're thinking, well, I can't do that. How, how would you encourage them to get moving? So how um, my, my life be, uh encourage others. I, I think understanding the attributes of dance and, and kind of living and breathing it, um, I think the only way is obviously to make it very inclusive and to not just simplify it, but to make it manageable for many uh, people's abilities and age, of course. Um, and so I do encourage people just to take part, just to have a go, you know, not to be intimidated by difficulties or things like that and to be really encouraging and to help them take part even you know if they just do it to their own ability um but uh, i think why i created diverse dance mix especially is to help as many people to enjoy dance um at at, at their level and and simplify steps in a way but not the choreography as such so it's such a brilliant mind workout uh, learning steps and linking them together um, but then not having too high a cardio uh, uh, skills um, and uh, making sure that it's manageable to get through it but it, like everything takes time so it, it's about keeping it fun keeping it entertaining and then I think people then really get all the benefits of dance and it doesn't matter what level they're at uh, to enjoy those. So we're talking about the benefits of dance and movement um, and just how they can benefit us in so many different ways and in all walks of life and in all situations of life. Um, how do you think right now that dance and movement has helped you? If we take that over to Peter. Oh, dance has helped me throughout my whole life. And dance can help everybody. I mean, it's amazing at the moment to see all the benefits that people are getting from dance all, all over the place. We see it online, we see people coming together. Um, so dance at the moment is having a fantastic impact. For me personally, at this period of time, dance is, well, it's probably the thing that's keeping me sane. I mean, it's clearly the case that throughout my life, dance has helped me um, with my mood. Um, and I know we're going to talk about that in more detail in another episode, but dance is fundamentally important for that balancing, the mental balancing that I've, I've done throughout my life. Um, one of the other things really working for us at the moment is with our young son, Romeo, who's seven, we're obviously homeschooling and that homeschooling can be quite intensive. So what we tend to do, if I'm working with Romeo, we might do, you know, do 20 minutes of maths and then we go off and we tap dance together and it's brilliant. So we go into our little studio and we tap dance and then we go back and we'll do some literacy and then we do some phonics and we do a bit more reading and then it might be the case that we go back into the studio again or then we use our bodies 
to make the shapes of the words that are people are, are, he's trying to learn, for instance, in literacy. So certainly with Romeo, I'm using dance and it's a wonderful bonding thing because it's really bringing us together, both through his learning and just through that whole homeschooling thing. Of course, through the dance, which is fantastic. And secondly, it's also been wonderful because obviously my wife and I, you know, Lindsay, who we, we spend a lot of time together, but we've been apart a great deal because I've been working a lot. And so what we're now doing is almost every evening, we're learning some swing dance together which is rather lovely. So we're dancing some swing dance and we're doing some Charleston and we're doing lots of lo lovely little things dancing together. And that's brought us closer together too. And Darcy? Um, I think the benefits that have helped me is, is mainly music. Um, I think any sort of exercise is obviously great, any sort of mood is great, but it's not really uh, interesting or motivating or inspiring unless you have music. And What's been great about this time is that I suppose, you know, even as a dancer, I listened a lot to music in a different way. I looked at the layers in music, um, you know, the backbeats, the, you know, just all the different instruments within a piece of music and how you emphasize those and how you can, I don't know, it's just more interesting listening to music, I suppose, when you've learned how to dance to it. And so now I suppose I've really enjoyed I look, listening and looking at different styles of dance again and looking at companies again and how that's inspired me to do more um, with especially with diverse dance mix creating more genres more styles um, that engage with people in a different way um, for me it, it is just a way of life I, I love um, doing something to do with dance each day. Um, and I think this has magnified the importance it is in my own life, but also that it should be an important part in other people's lives. Thank you so much to both Peter and Darcy for joining me today. It's been wonderful speaking to them both. And I hope you can hear the passion and drive and hopefully it will encourage you to get moving and have a little boogie, even if it's just around your kitchen. You can follow both Darcy and Peter on social media. We will put the tags below right here. And also Diverse Dance Mix offers free workouts every lunchtime at 1.30 on the Facebook page, which are also then put on YouTube. And again, we'll put the links for you below. So thanks again. My name's Giselle Parker. It's been a pleasure and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Stripe the style, style, style.